which is misleading very often because in modern languages praying means practically begging asking for something or when it is not begging or asking for something if we express gratitude or joy it is also always as it were addressed to a superior being who has power greatness where we are nothingness this is something which we must forget once and for all if we are going to go we discovered that in the early immigration i belong to that antiquated body because i found myself with my parents in immigration in 1920 when i was a boy of seven and in that generation the generation of my parents in my home we discovered something about the lord jesus christ which one practically not perceived before where we went we were in russia in Russia, we went to cathedrals and to churches. They were great, solemn places. The services also were great and solemn. The priests occupied an outstanding place. And the people were an assembly of people who had gathered there to be faced with the greatness of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, and gather there to thank God for all He was doing. When we found ourselves in the grave, we found ourselves at the bottom of the throne. The poverty was extreme. The need was incredibly great. There was physical hunger, physical homelessness, and what was worse, estrangement. We were superfluous. We were not needed. We should not have been there at the period when the West itself was in a financial and economic crisis. When we began to create churches, we could not create cathedrals. We created little corners where we could be together with God. The first church that played a decisive role in my life in Paris had a screen of plywood and icons of paper. But the priests were of old. There was hunger and hopelessness among them. But the sound and what we discovered in this church that were so poor, so desolate, was that God lived in them with the same fullness as he had lived in the great cathedral. He needed not a cathedral to be in our midst. He was one of us. More than this, we could not fall lower than he, because however low we fell, we found the Lord God with his arms outstretched ready to receive us in his arms and to protect us. We discovered a God who was not the God of the great cathedrals, who one approached with awe, with fear, like beggars, but a God who was one of us, who had chosen to be one of us, 
and who would approach them as such. And that made a great difference to our sense of prayer. Because prayer was no longer begging. Prayer was a moment of wonderful encounter. Prayer as a whole of the spiritual life could be understood as an encounter with the living God. An encounter not with a superior being before whom we had to tremble, before whom we had to kneel down in awe, but someone who had so much loved the world and each of us that he had become one of us and one with us. And praying became something very different. When we turned to the prayers which were offered us by the saints, they appeared to us in a new light. It was no longer a service of prayers which were offered God in order to endear ourselves to Him or to become acceptable to Him. It was prayers which had been born out of the need, out of the tragedies of life, out of the love of real people, people like us, turning to God. And we began to see these prayers in a new light. It was not a matter of reading these prayers or learning them by heart to recite them to God in order to placate Him or to attract upon us His condescension and His love. It was a matter of learning how the greatest soul in the world had approached God. How they had seen Him. How they had seen themselves. How they had seen life. And how they expressed this total, complex experience to the living God who had chosen to become one of us through the incarnation. And so, what we were taught was not to read in the morning and the evening a rule of prayer and feel that God must be content with that, that we had done our duty to God. It was a question of learning from these great men and women how one meets the living God and how one can speak to Him. This is something which I would like to insist on. Praying is a first of all an attempt at an encounter. But an encounter which usually when it happens between people, happens between two concrete persons who can perceive one another. We don't always perceive the divine presence. When is the encounter then? The encounter is in an act of faith. And what I would suggest is that, that before any one of us says a word of prayer, we take our stand alone. We can stand or sit or lie. That does not matter. Because God, as Sir Ambrosio of Optimus says, does not look at the legs of people with their hearts. We all stand before God and say to Him, Lord, in your humility, in your love for mankind, in your readiness to save me and all others, I know that you are present here and that you allow me 
Let us think. 
one of these players in Oxford Shells. First of all, they got any sense of having God's presence or the invisible presence of God. And then, what can I say to you? I can recite this prayer. Is it a prayer that will be true? Or be a lie? Or in emptiness? If you think any of the prayers of the saints, you will say that this phrase, I can say sincerely, yes, I know what he was saying, and experience it, I know it. Another passage will come, will say that I have no idea of what it refers to. I cannot uh, read it to God as though it was a lie. I must go, say no. He said and said this word. It must be true. I must ponder on them. I must be with his word. Try to understand them. Try to share his experience. And only then shall I be able to be honest and frank in my addressing you. And other passages, we will have to say, no, that I cannot say honestly. And I shall not. Because it will be an insult to God. The prayers of the saints will hit and curse our heart as music can hit our heart, as a personal emotion, a bereavement, a joy can hit us in the heart. And if we do this, then pray becomes true. Well, very often it's an act of politeness or a lie. an act of slavish allegiance. But to do that, we must, as the founder of Lewis advises to do, we must be prepared, about the moments when we pray, to dwell on these prayers, to take one prayer and ask ourselves questions. What do his words mean? What does mercy mean? What means my brother? What mean all the words which I am going to say? Ask ourselves what they mean in themselves. What they mean for me within my experience. What event in the experience of the saint judging by the context. And then gradually we can grow into being able to say these prayers as though they were ours. Perhaps not at the scale of the saints, on a smaller scale, but on a total scale. A triangle may be small or immensely big, if you measure triangle. If this, my prayer is like a small triangle, it is an image of a great one. If my prayer is true, but as small as I am, it is capable of growing through truth, through experience, through 